Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of the Deen Show. We're here trying to help you understand Islam and Muslims, and we'd like to thank you for coming to this program to learn the truth. We ask that you have an open mind to be sincere with yourself, to be sincere with the Creator, first and foremost. And this episode of the Dean Show is one, once in a while I will pick certain emails. I like to get your comments and suggestions. I am not a scholar, but I like to sit with scholars, sit with students of knowledge, sit with people who are more knowledgeable than myself, so we can both benefit. So please, the fit questions, these questions that will require someone with a bigger beard and someone with much more knowledge than myself, we're going to save that for them. Now, this email in particular was one that uh, really touched my heart. And my next guest, we're going to analyze this, talk about it. It's a, from a sister. And I'm sure a lot of you people, some people who are really not firm in the deen, were making mistakes day and night. Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So we hope that we can stop making these uh, uh, bad decisions and we can get to submitting ourselves more to our Creator. And after we read this, we're going to analyze this and try to give some advice. The email goes a little something like this. She says, please, could you help me out? I'm so upset. I can't stop crying. I don't want to see my sister crying. I'm so upset, stressed out, I can't think straight. I'm 17 years old. I've never drank, I haven't smoked, thank God. However, I've done something very bad. She started texting, it starts with those little things, texting a guy, and then she hooked up with a guy. I'm so bad, she says. It just happened, I'm not proud of it. I regret it. I met this guy last year. I used to see him and I've done some really bad things with him. I know I'm so bad, I do ask Allah to forgive me. I know life is short and I don't want to go to hell. I got no future with this man, then why do I feel for him so much? Even, so, even, even though he showed me his true colors, he even said, I don't love you anymore. I feel that the only way that I can get true happiness is through Islam. I'm not practicing Islam as I should. I've sinned so much. Is there any hope for me, she asks. Brother, please help me. And that's why we're bringing out our next guest to talk about this. We're in the real world. There are real issues that are going on. So we're going to try to reach out to the sister and talk about this when we come back on The Dean Show. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Very good, alhamdulillah. It's good to have you back here with us. Good to be here again. Uh, we want to get straight down to the topic here. A lot of people got to um, see your last show, hopefully, if they're keeping up with this series that we do every week. And they can visit thedeanshow.com and... Our brother, Noman Ali Khan, has his own uh, area there. You can click and see all the shows that we've done with this brother. This sister, she's made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Yes. We sin by day and by night. Allah is so merciful. He covers up our sins. We don't want her to lose hope. You, you heard what I just read. Yes. She's hooked up with some guy, you know, and these women sometimes are naive, and the guy's on the hunt, and he got what he wanted, and now he's out. We don't want this to happen to another sister. And we don't want the brothers doing these things also, so we want to just touch upon this so everybody can benefit and sure. do the right thing. Sure. First things first. Um, shamelessness, or al-fahsha as it's called in the Qur'an and Sunnah, is one of the biggest problems and one of the biggest sins that are mentioned. It's a grave matter. Mm -hmm. It's a very serious matter. At the same time, in the times in which we live, this is the most common sin uh, in my assessment, this is the most common sin after 
disrespect of parents uh -huh. that our youth are involved in. Yes. It starts with things through technology like text messaging and Facebook or MySpace or whatever, uh, pornography on the internet and other sources, and then it moves on to the actual physical act of, of zina with Muslims and among non-Muslims. And this is a prevalent thing. It's a serious, serious problem. Yeah. Dealing with this is a particularly difficult issue uh, because it's very close to the heart for a lot of parents who are heartbroken if their children are engaged in something like this. And a lot of times the parents don't even know that a lot of their kids are engaged in something like this. But, at the, inshallah, we'll, we'll talk about its consequences in a bit. But what I want to share first is the, the key question that sister had in particular. Is there hope for me? Mm -hmm. Allah commands us in the Qur'an not to lose hope in Him. Yeah. And he speaks about that ayah of hope in the beginning with a with very interesting phrasing. Ya ibadi, O my slaves, alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim, those who have transgressed and engaged in violations against their own selves. La taqnatu min rahmatillah, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhuruba jami'a, no doubt it is Allah who will cover up the sins, who will forgive the sins, all of them all together. This principle of Allah forgiving, um, before we talk about it more, I want to share, you, share with you another side of this picture. In Surah Al-Furqan, this is Surah number 25, Allah speaks about the person who commits murder or commits zina. Zina is the act of fornication. Uh -huh. Okay. Allah says about this person, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ Except what for the one who repented, and we have to talk about what repentance really means, وَآمَنَ And revive their faith, وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And then engaged continuously and rigorously in good deeds. Uh -huh. So they did three things. They repented, revived their faith, and acted. They were good after that. Now, hear this out. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Allah says, Then for those people, their mountain of evil deeds, Allah will replace them with a mountain of good deeds. Uh -huh. So He will take your pile of filth and convert it into a pile of gold. If you can do just three things. First thing, tawbah, repentance. Second thing, revive your iman, revive your faith. Actually, the Prophet tells us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يسرق السارق حين يسرق وهو مؤمن. A thief at the time that he's engaged in theft is not a believer. لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن. A fornicator at the time that they're engaged in that act, they're not a, they're not a believer. Yeah. They have to leave that faith to do that. Yeah. Right? So it's a profound statement of the Messenger This is why when Allah talks about Tawbah, He says, first you repent from it, but what do you have to get back now? Your faith. Wa'amana, revive your faith. So you're not a believer at that time. Not at that time. So if death catches you, you're in some big trouble while you're, you're doing that fornicating trouble. and this, drinking. I mean the, the, the theologians talked about this at different scales, and they talked about you know Iman being different from Islam, meaning you're still a Muslim, but your Iman is gone. Yeah. Because the word used in the Hadith is yeah. Mu'min. Um, but there are more stern interpretations of that same text too. In any way, in any case, this uh, sister and many brothers and sisters like her, the first step really is stopping it. You have to stop all communication. You have to give this up in its entirety. If it is that you, you end up texting this person, emailing this person, talking to this person, when you're alone, then stop being alone if you're that weak. Be around company. Go to the masjid and sit there. Go sit with some other sisters. Go serve your parents. Because that'll take the, the, that opportunity of time that you had where you uh -huh. were falling into sin, it'll take that away. But sincerely repent. Sincerely get away from this sin. And if you're really, sometimes people are addicted. Uh -huh. They hate themselves for their addictions, but they're still addicted. You know, like you know, drug addicts sometimes, they hate drugs, but they still take them. And then they hate themselves more for it. So the, the best thing to do is actually get out of that cycle. Right? So get out of the, those... those times and places and opportunities that trigger this behavior. Get out of that cycle, get away from it, mm -hmm. all, all together. This is the first step you have to take. The reason you're drawn to this person is this is the first person that you actually emotionally attach yourself to. Yeah. And Allah made women uh, exceptionally loving and compassionate and, they're at and attached. So this is uh, 
you know, it's a, it's a strength that Allah gave women, but if it's used incorrectly or if it's misused, it becomes a weakness. And in this case, in your case, it's a weakness. So the men pray off this. The men pray off of that compassion. They'll be, they'll be nice and kind and flowery words. And they will, you know, throw words that, that have emotional meaning, but they don't mean them because they only have one agenda, fulfilling their desire. Yeah. And when that ful agenda is fulfilled, she's nothing more than a piece of meat to him that's used. Go get lost. I don't love you anymore. I'd rather marry a sea girl, etc., etc. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you've already fallen into this trap, and you already know that he's shown you his true colors. So what you have to do now is get away entirely. Just completely walk away from this. Make tawbah. Spend your time in learning about your religion. Spend your time in worshipping Allah. You, I know you've cried a lot, but you need to cry not because you're sad over that guy. You need to cry begging Allah to forgive you. You need to shed sincere tears. There's not enough tears you can shed when begging Allah for forgiveness. Allah loves nothing more than the sincere tears that the slave of Allah sheds in begging forgiveness of him. These are precious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How about the, uh, we got some young men, they're Muslim. Yeah. And you know what, they're out there hustling, they're trying to hook up with the women. And now, how do we give them advice to know that they shouldn't be doing this? And I've see, actually talked to some brothers who are doing some good, but he said, brother, I, th I, this is a vice that I have. I just can't stop. It's an addiction. What do we got to say? This is, this is a, it's a, been, terrible, it's yeah. a terrible addiction. And it's so powerful that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa warned us the greatest threat he feared for this ummah, for this nation, wasn't the threat of invading armies, or like, you know, a g massive weapons of destruction. Uh -huh. What was the greatest threat? He said, for the men of my ummah, I fear women. Yeah. This will be the temptation. This is where shaitan will get you. You will have the long beard. You'll be at the masjid for fajr. You'll be a good brother, even yeah. memorizing Quran, doing good deeds. But when it comes to this one thing, you can't help yourself. My advice, and, and because I, you know, I used to live on my own in New York City. And, you know, you can keep the facade of a religious person and a good person does good uh, things, and then have this one thing that's kind of your vice, and you, know, so you start telling yourself, well, at least I do so much other good. Yeah. So I have this one bad thing Allah is going to forgive. I mean, it's not that bad. It's yeah. bad, but it's not really that bad. You know? So you start justifying to yourself. Allah speaks about the people of taqwa. It's really, I, I was baffled by this passage in Al Imran. He speaks about the people who enter paradise. He speaks about their good characteristics, but we're not here to talk about the good characteristics. In that same passage he says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَ Whenever these people committed an act of shamelessness, they looked at something they shouldn't have, they touched something they shouldn't have, they went somewhere they shouldn't have, that was shamelessness, they gave in to their seduction, their de desires, right? These people, Allah says, as soon as they أَوْضَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ or they wronged themselves in any other way, what's the first thing they did? ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ they immediately remembered Allah. Immediately, the first thing was remembering Allah. Now think about this. When we disobey Allah, how easy is it to remember Allah at that time? Like if somebody's stealing, would they want to remember Allah at that time? No. Yeah. When somebody's looking at something haram, would they want to say Allahu Akbar or Astaghfirullah at that time? No. They're so ashamed of their behavior, they don't even want to mention Allah. Right? So what Allah is asking you to do, what is commanding, the, the people of Jannah are people who do make mistakes. But as soon as they fall into a trap, immediately they remember Allah. Mm -hmm. Then they ask Allah to forgive their sin, sincerely ask to forgive their sin. And this asking for forgiveness, we have to learn, is not just saying astaghfirullah. You know the phrase in Arabic, astaghfirullah, yeah. which we learned in the sunnah, I seek the forgiveness of Allah, right? Uh, is memorized and people just recite it over and over, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. But really, what I mean by that is, you know, if you insulted your mother, and you didn't even look at her and you say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just like that. Are you really sorry? No, there's, an, uh, there's a face, there's an attitude, there's a feeling when you're really embarrassed and humiliated and sorry. So that's what we have to be. But as advice to brothers who are fallen addicts to this thing, what they definitely, definitely need is change of company. It is most likely their friends that have sucked them into this environment. Or if they have good friends that they're not spending enough time with. So they, they need, they're not strong enough on their own, they need to be with somebody else. They need to be around better people. People that will save them rather than drag them further into hellfire. This is absolutely, absolutely critical. No amount of knowledge will help you sometimes. You can have the whole Quran memorized, but you won't get help yeah. from that. 
Sometimes the only thing is Allah's help and even the most strongest. I mean, th think of this example. Yusuf alayhi salam, a prophet of Allah, a prophet of Allah. He's in that situation. Beautiful woman is seducing him. He's in the room alone, nobody else around. And he actually is scared of Allah. But in addition, you know what he's scared of? Himself. The Quran quotes, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ nafsi." I don't consider myself innocent either. I don't say that I don't have desires. He acknowledges his human weakness. This is the greatness of Yusuf alayhi salam. In the end, as, as noble as he is as a prophet alayhi salam, he's still a man. And a man naturally has desire for women. So he asks Allah to protect him after acknowledging his own weakness. A lot of times these brothers, they, they uh, live with the facade, this weak, shallow argument that brother, I'm not that weak, I'm strong, I can handle myself. Yeah, I'm just talking to her, but what do you think I am, some kind of pervert? You know, this, that's, what they'll, that's the mentality. I'm strong, I can take it. Yeah. You know, here you have one of the greatest prophets. This man can take imprisonment. He can handle being thrown in a well, but he can't handle that. He asks Allah to protect him from that. Subhanallah. He said, prison is better for me than what these women are calling me uh -huh. to. Right? This is a very serious lesson. We, if you don't have that firmness, first acknowledge your weakness. And then second, make sure you have a change of company. Get away from that environment. Yeah. Get away from things that lead you to that. He says, okay, brother, you know what? Uh, the, the person is saying, okay, well then why did Allah put this in me? Why did the Creator put this in me? And now, you know, I'm supposed to fight this. It's there. It's natural. It is natural. So natural that Allah calls it natural. Uh -huh. Allah says, Zuyira uh, nas." Certain things were beautified for people. Yeah. This is the ayah of things that were beautified for us. Hubbu shahawati bin nisa Love of desires fulfilled out of women. Number one thing that was made desirable for people. Nowadays you want to buy a car, half naked woman standing next to it in, in the ad. Mm -hmm. What does beer have to do with women? Mm -hmm. Nothing. But they want to sell it, sell it through women. Mm -hmm. Use women as objects, right? The first desire that people have, multi, multi million dollar, billion dollar industry, pornography. Selling what? Desire of man for woman. Yeah. That's what it's selling, right? Uh, prostitution, desire for women. All these crimes come from what one thing? That obsession man has for women, women yeah. right? So, hubu shahawat bin nisa wal banin. Later on in life, you will desire to have sons rather than daughters. Allah says people love having sons. Wal qanatir al muqantara min al dhahabi wal fidda. Piled up heaps of wealth out of gold and silver, meaning savings, assets, big savings accounts, right? Lots of lot, lots of assets to fall back on, right? And then a good ride. Well, Khail al Musawwaba and branded horses. Now we don't have branded horses, we have branded horsepower. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but it's the same thing. Well, An'am wal Harth, cattle. Cattle refers to your investments, because cattle in the old day was the investment. That you do, you, but it's career, really, what it's referring to. And Harth, the return on your investment, the crop that comes out of that investment. These are things that people are obsessed with. Yeah. It, and if you find people nowadays, worldly people that are not concerned with religion, what are they obsessed about? Look at what they're doing. Either it's women, desire, or it's money, right? Or it's their investment, their business, right? Or it's their car, their ride, it's a big thing, right? These are the things that people are obsessed with constantly. Allah says these things are there, they've been put inside of you, but then the question arises, why? Right? Allah says beautifully, ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya. All of that is utility, things to enjoy a little bit in worldly life. وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ And Allah, He has much better return than this. He has much better than this to offer. So if you think your desires are being challenged by the beauty of this woman, or this wealth, or this house, imagine the one who created this is saying, I've got much better than this. Right? So actually these desires are there to feel, if you really believe in the hereafter, to make you, help you imagine, man, if this is so tempting here, I should be far more tempted by what he has. But this is only going to be done for the one who believes in the unseen. Every Muslim says they believe in the unseen. Do they really believe in the unseen? Do they really believe Allah has something better to offer? Do they really believe the house that Allah has for them will have better specs, better square footage, better landscaping, better property value than what they're going after in this world? It's really, it's not just a thing you say and pass over. It's a state of mind to really believe that there's something better in the, le in the next life, right? And this is what it boils down to. These desires have been put in us to see, in the end, 
Is your belief in the next life and better things in the next life stronger? Or would you rather take this now? To, to cap this off, Allah speaks about disbelievers. Mm -hmm. But this is a human condition. All human beings, especially those who have weak iman, may Allah protect us all from it. Or no, nobody's susceptible from it no, or safe from it. One of the things he tells us very powerful is, Kalla bal tuhibboon al ajila. Okay? What this means is, no, you people are in love of rushing the things. <coughs> uh -huh. You want to get things quickly. Now, the thing is, just to put this in perspective, if you run a business, right, and I'm trying to sell you something, uh, you're, you're trying to sell me something, and I say, okay, I'll buy it from you for a hundred bucks, uh -huh. but I'll pay you next month. Okay? I'll pay you a hundred bucks, but next month. Another customer walks in and says, I'll pay you 90 bucks, but I'll pay you cash right now. You know what a good businessman will take? The 100 bucks next month or the $90 cash right now? He'll take the $90 cash. Yeah. Why? Because we, need to, we love getting things immediately. We don't want to wait. You yeah. know, in business they say time is money. Yeah. That, that attitude. Want to get everything now. So now here's the picture. Allah, our Lord tells us, I will give you a house. I will fulfill every last one of your fantasies. Every last one of them. There's nothing in your imagination that you desire that you will not get. Everything you will get and more beyond your imagination. But it's not cash. It's credit. Yeah. If you want that, then you got to wait. You can have some of this, this. It's not like you're denying the world. It's not like you can't get married or can't have children. You can't have good life in, in this world too. You can have them, but I'll put restrictions on it for you. Mm -hmm. But if you want it unlimited, live this restricted life. And I'll give you unlimited. This is the sales pitch from Allah. An another sales pitch from Shaitan. He says, why you gotta wait? I'll get you this stuff right now. Enjoy it, live it up. You're young. When's this gonna come back? And when, you, when the Shaitan says this, and you forget that Allah is offering eternal youth. Allah is offering never-ending life. Allah is offering desires to the, to the nth. You forget all of that, all for what? One weakness? We rush to things. We yeah. can't wait. We can't, we can't hold off. We're almost out of time. A couple more points. Briefly go over them. If the person says, look, I'm going to have this in paradise anyways. I'm going to have this good time and all these other things that you mentioned. What's the big deal if I have it here? If they take say, your pick. Take your you pick. You got to take your pick. The Messenger of Allah told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. Beautiful phrase. He says, this world is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. Mm -hmm. If you want to turn this world into paradise, then who are you? According to the messenger's description, yeah. you don't really believe in the next. You might think you do, you might say you do, but you really don't. The, the other thing, just to add to this, زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Listen to these words, they're so powerful, especially for believers in our time. Yeah. Worldly life was beautified for those who disbelieved. Worldly life is beautiful, but for who? Those who disbelieved. وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they will poke fun at those who believe. They will say, you guys are missing out on life. Look at you people. You gave up all this stuff. You, you, so For what? For some paradise or some... And they'll make fun of our paradise. And Allah's words came true. They, they run after dunya and they poke fun at the believers for running after what? The akhirah, right? Yeah. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا And those who guarded themselves. Now look at the words. He didn't say those who believed. He said those who guarded themselves, those who feared the disobedience of Allah, they will be the ones who will be on top of the disbelievers on the day of resurrection, on the day of standing. So the phrasing there is ittaqaw, which means they had taqwa, they protected themselves, they warded themselves off from these temptations. They're the ones who will have the upper hand in the day of res on the day of resurrection. May Allah make all of us from them. I mean, a couple more points for the person to A. They're sincere, they want to do what the Creator wants them to do. How do they vent this? What is the direction they should go to let these urges out in the right way that's pleasing to the Creator? And B, just in short, because we, we got only a couple more minutes, mm -hmm. and the person, what's waiting for him if he just continues to persist doing what his desires are leading him to do and not doing it the right way? See, if you, uh, Allah speaks about the one who persists. Well, I'll take to your latter question first. Allah says, بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّئَةً no, but rather the one who earned a sin, a single sin. He's doing all this good stuff, but there's this one vice. وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَتُهُ And his mistake surrounded him. The, that one mistake, he just kept going back over, over, over. He wouldn't stop. 
Allah says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Those are the people of fire, in it they will remain. This person that's being described in this ayah is not someone who does all kinds of sins. One sin, but what's the problem? Over and over and over. Persist. He doesn't want to let it go. Yeah. This sin has become his God, yeah. basically. He submitted to this God. Have you seen the one whose desire has become his ilah, the one he worships, the one he sub submits to, the one he gives into? He will give up everything except that one desire. So then, who are you giving into? Allah or that desire, right? So it actually becomes a form of shirk, which is why this person earns, ends up earning the hellfire. As far as the advice is concerned, for those who are in this in this cycle, they're stuck in this rut, and they need to get out. Develop a relationship with the Quran. Develop a relationship with the Qur'an in the Salah. In the Salah. Have that relationship. Why do I say that? What does prayer have to do with shamelessness? Allah tells us, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Beautiful. He says, no doubt it is the prayer that prevents from shamelessness and evil deeds. So if you're a person who prays, but still does shameless things, that means you're not really praying. Because if you were really praying, then it would prevent you from shamelessness and evil deeds. So work on your prayer. Real, I mean, besides the good company thing I talked about before, really make a project, a life project out of your prayer. Memorize more Quran, study its meaning, know what you're reciting when you're reciting in the get, Salah. Get married? Hmm? Can I get married? Absolutely get yeah, married. Absolutely get married. Absolutely get married. Get married ASAP. Get married yesterday. ASAP. And marry for the right reasons. Marry, yeah. a, you know, the, the temptations will disappear. Yeah. The, she won't look beautiful to you after a couple of years. She's just your wife now. The ride is over. <laughs> <laughs> right? So marry for the right reasons. If that's your reason for getting married, it's too shallow. Inshallah ta'ala. Marry, a, you know, someone you find beautiful, but also who has beautiful character, beautiful deen. That'll make you a better person. Most importantly, that'll raise righteous children for you. Because those are your assets with Allah. That's your investment with Allah. May Allah make us all those who have righteous children, righteous wives, righteous husbands. May amin, Allah subhanahu amin, wa ta'ala protect us and our families. Amin. Thank you very much for being with us. And thank you for being with us also, everyone that is viewing us from all around the globe. If you don't get to see us here in the local Chicago area, you can see all of our shows at thedeanshow.com. Please take the advice. Don't barter something that is temporary for something that's permanent. We should strive to see our Lord in paradise. That is what the believer, he gets excited about. And then to be in a paradise where there's things to delight in, true peace and happiness, things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, things that you can't even fathom and imagine, this life is not worth losing all that for. And we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. God willing, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. The DVDs for Dawah, as Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Nahu 16.125, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. Invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom, beautiful preaching, and reason with them in ways that are best. And this is a great opportunity for you to take up the obligation, take up the call, as Allah has told you to do, and share this beautiful message with the world, Islam, submission to the one God. Come and see what everyone's talking about. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up worshiping God is one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to... It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see. Oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins in my heart. I'm your sinful slave. You're my loving Lord. I'm the one who runs away. Oh Allah, guide me.